What's going on, my hunger, hungry family, and welcome back to the Hungry Road. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. But in front of me here is a car that really needs no introduction. This is the 2021 Dodge Charger RT. Now, the RT stands for Road Track, which also means it has a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V8 Hemi hemispherical combustion chamber engine makes about 370 horsepower and 395 foot pounds of torque and i want to take this video to sort of celebrate this engine because there's not going to be many more of these coming out the naturally aspirated engines have, are falling by the wayside left and right i know ford just announced a new mustang that's still going to have the five liter v8 but there's only so much time left we can continue to make these kind of engines. Everything's going twin turbo this or hybrid that or all electric this. Even the next generation of Charger is going to be all electric. So let's take this video to celebrate, praise, and acknowledge the naturally aspirated V8. So people probably wonder why I'm such a huge Dodge fan. But they're very bold. They're very brash. They make crazy decisions. One of them, like last thing I remember, was throwing a 707 horsepower engine into a, a family sedan. That was wild. But they took a two-door Icon, the Dodge Charger, and made it into a four-door family sedan. Then they made the Challenger next to it, so it tried to like, save face or whatever. But like the original, newer sort of designs came out in like 07, 08. Correct me if I'm in the comments, but I'll probably research myself. Anyway, they got like a little bit of a facelift in 2010. And then in 2014, they changed it again. They made a move of a rougher body style and they had like those LED tail lights in the back. That was the like, first time you ever seen anything like that. I, I never forget, I was leaving Best Buy, leaving work, and I was headed home and I saw these three cars in a row on the, on the highway and they all had the same tail light configuration. They were driving in a row. I'm like, man, they gotta be testing some cars out here because, you know, Chrysler's out in Auburn Hills or whatever. And I was like, what is this? And it looked so cool because it was so bright at night. There was so many lights in the back of the car. And I never forget it. That's why I can recall it right now. But yes, in 2015, they come up with this sort of smoother style. And seven years later, we're still here. So you can still buy these brand new 2022s for about $42,000. Now they have a little bit of an upgrade here. We do have like some, there's like some extra features. I'm not even gonna go through all that because it's not even worth it to be honest. But you can get these cars for half that price on the pre-owned market now some of the newer things like from 2019 and up they gave you this sort of hood stock they gave you the rounded tailpipes at the back stock in 2015 it was a little bit different i'll try to throw some pictures up here so you can kind of see the differences or whatever but yes the naturally aspirated 5.7 liter v8 has stayed true the horsepower has kicked up a little bit i think it started around like 345 355 and now we're at the 370 here now that's the rt trim now you start at the sxt package which is like a v6 you get like 292 horsepower you don't want that i mean i get it it's fuel efficient my challenger the 2012 i had had that same exact engine in it it was very fuel efficient i can get 30 miles a gallon with that car no big deal but you want the emotion of the va you want that sound you want that roar of the american muscle car that's why people buy these cars it's cheap power all right let's check out the front end here very very nice smooth not super sharp but still quite aggressive front end we do have three air intakes we have one real one right here on the hood one here in the middle and a big grill down there you need a lot of air to feed this five 5.7 liter v8 it's a huge engine we do have a nice beautiful set of running lights up front here they kind of got this horseshoe thing. It goes around the side. I think it's absolutely beautiful. One of the best running lights in the entire car industry. No joke. They're so simple and make such a big statement. Now, we do have yellow headlights still. Just like I mentioned in the Chrysler 300 video, it's time to update those. I mean, if we're coming with the parts bin that with these designed, you know, five, six years ago, and you start still using them, fine. But let's put some bi Xenons in here or make these LEDs or whatever. But yeah, they're still yellow headlights. They, they make the car look a, just a little bit aged. So this car looks a lot better without those on. Coming across the uh, right side over here, we do have the Dodge logo. It's kind of subtle. You know, there's no like other badging up here. You know, it's very simple, very, very uh, toned down. So the Dodge with the two little stripes right there, very, very classy. And we do have a nice front splitter down here. Now the front splitter is, I don't know, is this four or five inches off the ground? It still looks low to the ground, 
but gives you plenty of ground clearance. So you're gonna be scraping this thing all every driveway you come across, but be careful, you know? You wanna take care of this guy right here. All right, let's check out the back end here. I believe it matches the front end perfectly. I love the design back here. License plate is nice and low, it's not in the middle, which ruins a lot of back ends of cars. But here's that giant running light I was talking about. It stretches all the way from one end of the car to the other. That is like one of the best running lights in the game. Now who's copying this for design? Everybody is right now. Porsche, Lincoln, Bugatti, craziness. We do have the, the company logo right here, model name, and the trim level right here. Done very tastefully, not just too in your face or anything like that. I love the big aggressive spoiler right here. Now you don't need this. This car is like 4,300 pounds and they fly off the ground no time soon. <laughs> but it still adds to the sports and to the aggressiveness of it. Now if I can direct your attention to these little vents right here, these are real, unlike, unlike some other cars I've seen. So air gets built up in the wheel well right here and it needs to be distributed or you get like turbulence and all kind of craziness. So the air gets let out here. So air pressure is relieved through this little vent right here. It helps keep the car planted, going straight, all that kinds of very, very nice touch to throw right in the bumper right there. And let's check out these giant tailpipes, almost as big as my fist. I mean, that is lovely. Now this is the standard back end for all 2019 RTs and up. Earlier editions between like 2015, 2016, 17, 18, was like more of like a, I don't know, like more of an elongated tailpipe. I'll throw a picture up here for you, but this is a much better looking back end. This used to be the upgraded back end for getting the SRT models and getting like the GT models for whatever reason. But I like this, it's standard now in the RTs. All right guys, here she is. This is a naturally aspirated 5.7 liter V8 that has been well known throughout the entire Chrysler lineup. It's in their trucks, it's in their cars, it's in vans, it's everywhere. So it's a very reliable, very awesome engine. But let's discuss, actually one thing I wanna point out here, look at the hood, check the hood out. So we have the hood here, and it ha this is the this is the air intake. But if you look underneath, it's just like an opening. Like it just kind of opens into the engine bay. It doesn't feed the engine. The air box feeds the engine. So what is this doing? Is it just cooling the engine? I, I don't know. But I'm, I can assure you, if you do a K&N air filter on there and an exhaust, you probably bump yourself up another 15 horsepower. But anyway, let's move on to the other engine options. So I've mentioned the SXT. That's a 3.6 liter V6. Makes about 292 horsepower. 305, depends on which car you get. We have this one here, the RT. Cool, no problem. Then there's the SRT engine or the Scat Pack engine. That's a 6.5 liter V8, naturally aspirated, makes 485 horsepower. That is an absolute monster of an engine. Then there's the Hellcats engine. That's the 6.4 liter supercharged V8. Now, they start out with two, 707 horsepower. Then it depends on which, which, which truck or which car it's in. It could be 707, 717, 701, or if you go to the, head, the Hellcat Red Eye, now you got 797 horsepower of the Hellcat, the, the Charger, and Char Charger and Challenger Red Eye wide body. Those are some crazy cars. Almost 800 horsepower in the same <laughs> configuration. Then there's the Dodge Demon. You can't get a Charger Demon, it's a Challenger Demon, but that's also the supercharged V8 making 860. This Dodge has gone crazy with this engine and I'm a big fan of it. A lot of us are big fans of it. All right, guys, let's discuss the interior here. It's pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. Not very many bells and whistles in here, but it's a very nice interior. There's not a stitch of leather anywhere and that's okay. I don't need all that leather. I got all the engine up front. So these are nice cloth, very basic hound tooth seats, but they're super bolstered. Like I'm in here, like I'm not moving. I'm not sure who's throwing this around a track anywhere or going around a corner that fast. So I got to be bolstered like this, but these, these are hugging you. You can't adjust these at all, but that's okay. The doors are fairly straightforward. There's not much to discuss there, but this does have an Alpine sound system. So it sounds absolutely beautiful. I love it. Again, Dodge wins again, or the Chrysler Group wins again with their amazing sound systems in these cars. Let's discuss the dash a little bit here. Now, there's a very familiar shape. If you look at the plastic of the dash right here, and you look at the rear tail lights, they're very, very similar. I think that's kind of cool how they kind of match like that. We have your tachometer on the left and your speedometer on the right and your various information gauges right in the middle, no big deal. So to change information on the, the instrument cluster right here, all you do is you press these little buttons right here. Very, very intuitive. Now, speaking of information, let's head, head over to the award-winning Uconnect screen. I've never seen this button in any other Charger or Challenger. Super track pack. Somebody option this up. Let's press it and explore it together. So now we get the Dodge performance control. So now we have like different sort of setups right here. 
can we change them individually yeah so i can kind of change uh do i want comfort normal sport off whatever i do have it in sport mode right now let's press the sport button see if anything changes nothing changed let's go back out oh yeah so now it's default norm 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 press sport again and everything changes okay so let's go ahead and uh you see that button right there i've never seen that button either i'm gonna do my best to see if we can get a launch control in this video i'm on public roads i don't know how this is gonna behave i don't know if i've ever officially launched a car before we'll see but you can set up a sport mode here yeah so you can go through and configure there's so much information i'm not even gonna go through all this because you should play with this yourself but there's one thing i want to show you performance pages look up there so we're gonna hear here go here let the page load for a little bit here all right the page did load up so let's give it a little gas see if we can okay yeah see the, the horsepower numbers did move there okay okay okay, okay. calm down calm down we so we have like timers let's see what we got in timer oh so i'm be using this thing <laughs> we got reaction time 60 foot quarter mile man this is crazy that all this information is in here stored what about gauges oil temperature oil pressure battery voltage coolant temp g-force meter eh, i don't really cares about that what's the engine do what's that say we have all the different uh okay your horsepower that's a cool looking screen so we have our oil our pressure right there in the middle we have how much horsepower we're using how much torque we're using dyno you can put it on a dyno man oh it's like when you're this is this is a cool screen so we gotta play with this some more all right we're in the back seat of the dodge charger there's not much happening back here we have the same cloth seats these are not nearly as bolstered as much as the front seats are but there's not many amenities back here i did spot some leather we have leather storage pockets in the back seat i'm okay with that we do have our own climbing vents we have two usb ports back here usb a by the way nothing crazy like literally that's it let's check out this little thing here armrest with some cup holders that's cool with me and my little eye well, I spy with my little eye a little strap right here. You can pull probably to lower the whole seat. Let's see if it works. Yeah. Why are we doing it? I don't know, but at least you can. All right. So here are the keys to the Dodge Charger. Very simple key. Dodge logo on the back. Unlock button up top. Lock button. Uh, trunk button. Remote start button. One of my favorite buttons on these kind of cars. Panic button right here. But like most of these cars, keep the key in your pocket. Walk up to the door handle. Put your hand underneath and the door will unlock all right cool let me close it press this button to lock it back all right and now we still have the keys in our pocket let's head to the trunk there are three ways to open the trunk it's on our trunk button let's do that you can press the trunk button right here twice this little guy right here twice or there's a button right here let's press this one the trunk is not motorized oh hold on didn't, didn't do it did it recognize all right trunk is not motorized but it will open all the way up we have a decent amount of storage in here it's a you know family sedan i got enough room from backpack camera equipment all my stuff fits in here just fine you see the angle you know what time it is y'all right, let's start this little beast up it's a sound you never get tired of this car has 48,256 miles on it and it's a 2021 somebody been driving the heck out this thing for good reason now let's roll the windows up start talking to you guys but i guess i kind of want to hear that engine so let's leave it down for a little bit and that exhaust note is just beautiful it's just it's just incredible like i love listening to it it's a, it's a soundtrack all by itself now i'm not one of those people who like who needs a radio when you have the soundtrack like this? no you still gotta hold on Woo! roll these windows up get a little windy out there but i i love the charger the rt platform now i have driven a uh, scat pack once but i don't really remember it like it was like a really short dry like it wasn't worth anything so I, I need to get my hands on like the bigger engine charger or challenger to see what that's like you know because like 
is another 100 horsepower on the same platform. I, I'm having trouble imagining what that even feels like, you know? Maybe like the Tesla, when you smash that and you get thrown back in your seat. But no matter. I love the thick steering wheel in this car. It's a lot to hold on to, a lot to grip. It feels good. It's leather. It's nice and grippy. <laughs> Real good, comfortable steering wheel. Not too complicated down here. It's fairly simple. It's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too crazy going on down here that's going to distract you from your road, your, your road duties or whatever, your job that you're driving. All right, leaving from a light here. Let's give it some juice. Like it has a different sound below like 3,500 RPM, 4,000 RPM. It's like when it gets up there, some baffles open somewhere or something else happens and you get even more sound. That is the addicting sound. Let's go into manual mode, click the gear shifter over to the left a little bit and click the, sh at the paddles here up on the steering wheel. We're in sixth gear right now out of eight. Let's click it down, fifth, fourth, third. That sound is intoxicating. And you can hear it coming from like a little while away. But driving this car kind of brings me back home. Like it's just a very comfortable platform that I'm very used to, you know? Cause I drove my 2012 Dodge Challenger for like five years before it got smacked out. And I miss it so, like I have this itch to just get one of these or, or a Challenger, you know? They're everywhere and it's like, that, and just like you can get them for like 25 grand, 30 grand all day long because they're everywhere and they're not expensive to fix because they're American made and there's so many of them, parts are everywhere. Like, but then you, will you stand out? Do you care about standing out? You know, that's kind of the thing there. I like to stand out. I want to be just a little bit different. I, 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 I can be a little flashy, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you, you will fit in with these, you know, you're not special. In a, in a Charger or a Challenger, even with the RTs, you know, same thing with the scat packs, like they're everywhere, not everywhere, but not, down, not down here, go to Detroit, go to Michigan, scat packs everywhere, you know, so it's just like, how do you, how do you want to do your thing, you know, do you want to fit in, do you want to stand out, I would rather stand out, but I'm still, I would get a Hellcat, you got to go big or go home, you know, I mean, I do want to go home at the end of the day, but like, I, w I want all of it or nothing. You feel me? All right, guys, I found a safe place to do launch control. And that would be the side of the highway. <laughs> you could do 80 or 75, or whatever. So when I start on the shoulder and smash until you get where you gotta go, because launch control will shut off at like 60 miles an hour or something like that. So I have this sports track, super track pack thing pulled up. You press activate launch control. Now I get to launch, press brake and quickly apply full throttle. Now you can actually, oh my, you can change your launch RPM from 1500 all the way to 3000. So my foot is currently on the brake and I'm actually waiting for a safe place to do this. All right, not yet. All right, guys, I have my foot flat on the brake and what it wants you to do is apply full throttle. Some rubber back there. I don't know. I heard it. I saw it come up in the rear view mirror. But I don't even want to do that anymore. Uh, can I check and see how it, how it went? I don't know. But that was pretty cool. Like it like did a line lock for me. So I held my foot on the brake and I added the throttle and it spun the wheels. I clearly did. I left the brake and I took off. Now this car is not the fastest thing on the road, you know. And one of my gripes is it sounds faster than it is like it makes a whole bunch of noise raw, raw. it's like one of those dogs that barks a whole lot well, don't got a whole lot of bite yes this car is 370 horsepower 400 foot pounds of torque but it's all to the rear wheels and it's a very heavy car and the torque kicks in at like 4500 rpm and you, you just don't get it all when you need it like that's some of the things with all-wheel drive you get more torque you get double the torque not double the torque but like the torque is to all the wheels. So you're pushing and pulling the car at the same time versus just the rear wheel just pushing the car. So you, you get, you know, it, it kind of goes back and forth. But with all that said, I would still, hands down, take one of these cars 
over a car that has all the bells and whistles. Like, I love the sound. I love the soul. I love the personality of it. It just burns a bunch of rubber, go in a straight line. Now, I know Dodge has been working on being able to put these cars on tracks and throw them around corners and things like that. Most of us don't care about that. We don't. <laughs> we just gonna live and enjoy them. I kind of want to try launch control again, but that was a little too scary for me, especially on public roads, you know, being a highway or whatever, and there's rocks and stuff on the side. I don't need blind spot. I can just look over my shoulder, you know? I don't need electronic steering correction and self-driving and all that stuff, because I'm driving the car myself. I will take this engine, up, oh, take it out of sport mode so it'll shift. Yeah, sport mode keeps the revs a little higher, so it'll shift and all that kind of stuff. But I will take the, this this engine, this platform over any of the other cars. I mean, especially at this price point. It, you can't beat it. Like dollar, someone did some math somewhere where you get like the most amount of horsepower sticking with the Dodge brand versus any other car brand. Now, yes, when you get a whole bunch of horsepower, you might sacrifice some other things. You know, it's like getting a steak with no vegetables. <laughs> you know, I have a pretty good analogy uh, coming up next. But I, I love it, you know. Give, give it a good mash here. <laughs> I love it so much. I got I have to get my hands on, on the bigger and the SRT engine. You know, I have to. Somebody, let me drive your scat pack, please. Thank you. All right, guys, we're going to try launch control one more time. We have activate launch control button to launch, press, brake, and quickly apply throttle. Car is in drive. I'm going to wait for this car to pass me on the left. Oh, I got a freaking, all right, we gotta do it now or never. That's too much fun, too much fun. Yep, car, it definitely spins the wheels and I feel like the brake lets itself go. But yes, that's too much fun. Like, I feel like the car releases the brake for you or I don't, I, I don't know. I don't be launching cars on a regular basis. Crucify me in the comments, please. Thank you. <laughs> Obviously, I need more practice with this because I don't know what I'm doing with it. I'm just doing what it tells me. Foot on the brake, foot on the gas, and go. A little wheel spin, but I think maybe I'm not used to driving cars with this much power, but not that much grip because that's what they do. My Ford Taurus, I punch it. it the wheels stick to the ground, it's all-wheel drive, and it goes. I don't be spinning no tires, fam. Tires expensive. Well, guys, that's my time with the 2021 Dodge Charger RT. It's kind of uh, sentimental to me because I reviewed the Dodge Challenger RT 2021, very same year. Uh, almost two, not, yeah, almost. That was a video that my very first YouTube video, and it was it was horrible. But it got like a, a lot more likes than I thought it would get. So I appreciated being able to come back, and sort of re-review a different platform in a better light. But I would consider this car the American cheeseburger of cars. Hear me out. Cheeseburger. You got your bun, your cheese, your burger. Seasoning. That's it. There's no lettuce. There's no tomato. There's no truffles. There's no, I mean, some pickles on there. There's no garlic aioli. There's no anything. It's very bare, very basic. You get the job done. You have four, five seats, cloth seats. You know, I don't got blind spot detection. <laughs> I got 20 inch rims and I got a big engine up front. What else do I really need? You know, there's no electric assist. There's no parking sensors. There's just nothing. It's just a very basic burger. And some people love that. If you want the double burger, you get the, the RT scat pack. You get the even bigger engine with still no features. <laughs> but anyway, guys, I appreciate you checking out this video. If you're first time seeing my face, please like the video and subscribe while you're at it. I really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you guys. Take care.